Hi guys and uh, welcome back to uh, another one of uh, these uh, video blogs that I uh, intend to uh, uh, do. Uh, this one's uh, on the uh, Rhino that I've uh, just completed and uh, what you'll be seeing in this part of the video is me using the Vallejo polyurethane primer. Um, I've got it in a 200mm size and uh, if you're actually uh, going to be purchasing primers for your new airbrush or you're into airbrushing I do recommend you getting hold of that sort of size if you can the amount of money that you'll save in the long run um, going for the 200mm size is um, it's definitely wor worth the uh, initial uh, investment in price um, I just added a little water to the polyurethane primer and now uh, it states that you can just uh, spray it straight onto the uh, miniature there um, but uh, to be honest uh, I want to make sure that it's going to come out nice and smooth uh, also the most important thing to uh, notice uh, when you've got an airbrush and you're priming uh, um, is when you're actually starting to actually spray out your primer or your paints for that matter is you, you want to make sure that you're, you're doing it nice and precise but th the most important uh, key uh, factor is you have to look at the miniature very close and then as soon as you actually see the paint starting to look wet on the miniature stop what you're doing because uh, all you'll do is you'll be blasting paint around the miniature so you you want to put the paint down nice and thin and as soon as you can start seeing the paint well I'm, I think I'm showing you there I, I've got to stop because the the, the uh, paint started to look a little wet and you've got to w wait for it to dry uh, oh, I'm, I'm, I was going to edit this out but I thought no you know you've got to show <laughs> these little epic fails there's one tiny little uh, hole in this cover uh, in the whole plastic cover there and I had to spill a bit of paint through and he went right through the mat there I had to take the cover off and clean the mat down <laughs> so yeah uh, we all make mistakes it's nice to uh, I'm sure uh, that would have made a few of you uh, chuckle right here uh, I'm painting this uh, uh, in a different way to how I painted the Storm Rover I want to paint it in more of a quick and dirty style so I want to make sure that the um, primed uh, coat is nice and even so unlike before where I was adding different greys and, and, uh, and, and whites and, and that sort of thing mixing them together to create um, natural looking highlights I'm going to be going for the uh, pre-shading technique uh, here that um, many of the uh, modelers in the community use and it still looks nice uh, and uh, you, you should see uh, the overall look at the end but you can see look how, how wide the uh, cone is of that spray and how quickly you can uh, prime a miniature uh, uh, with the airbrush uh, to know uh, for new users of the airbrush there I'm using this at about um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it when you're just starting or and other people in the community that have been airbrushing for a while probably wouldn't recommend it but I'm probably squirting out about 40 psi uh, there and uh, but I've just got used to it I, I like the high psi when I'm uh, uh, base coating or, or priming the miniatures it allows me to get further away so uh, I don't uh, run the risk of uh, putting uh, the paint down to where you, you've got to be careful again with distances if you're too far away you're going to leave like a, a powder sort of uh, textury uh, coat into the miniature which you definitely don't want it's where the paint's starting to dry before it hits the model but then again if you get too close you're going to be um, splattering paint all around the, the, the uh, tank there so it's a case of just getting used to distances that's one of the uh, key factors to learn in the airbrush but it's, it's, it's not complicated at all really um, you pick it up fairly quickly um, doing things that I, I also wouldn't recommend to other people definitely not uh, um, I'm not wearing gloves and <laughs> I'm holding parts as I'm priming which is not a good idea really uh, you can easily touch some of the wet paint with your fingertips so um, showing bad habits here this is this is not um, techniques that I'd say that uh, everyone should be employing to be honest um, but I think we've all got our little uh, little kinks that need ironing out that we do um, I'm just making sure pretty much everything's got a nice even coat here and the camera's probably picking this up as a, as a, like a, a white primer but it's actually grey it's like uh, this is interesting as well um, using airbrush uh, 
an airbrush use a hairdryer now I can officially say the hairdryer is not mine I don't have long flowing golden locks it's my wife's but she uh, either kindly lets me use it or I pinch it so I'll let you decide which of the two it is but anyway uh, make sure you have the uh, heat on low and you don't want the uh, air blowing too quick especially uh, if you've just got a fairly wet model so uh, just have it fairly low right I've started the pre-shading here and I've got a, a black and it's from the Vallejo game color range it's a really nice black actually and it's heavily watered down uh, hopefully you're actually seeing the cup and you can see the liquid moving in the cup so you can actually see how um, thin that is it you know you hear a million times over you know you want the consistency to be sort of like milk basically you know just a little thicker than water you really want it thin and uh, with appreciating what you've seen here I'm getting really close but only applying a, a tiny amount of um, pressure to the trigger just pulling back a, a, a tiny bit there and um, Oh, I want really fine but dark lines uh, in the details and you'll see on this uh, Rhino uh, hatch rear hatch that uh, you've got the uh, pattern where the two plates meet that I'm trying to follow that now I don't do a perfect job here um, but there's techniques and, and there's ways to cover that up which I do I mean it's not too bad it's but uh, it's it's not ideal so at the moment it's just very thin uh, fine lines that are uh, fairly dark and this contradicts what I said about the storm raven where I was I didn't I didn't want really extreme shadows but the only way to actually speed up the painting process of um, doing this uh, uh, rhino was to actually do it this way <coughs> excuse me um, so you'll you'll notice um, that I'm literally looking for all of the areas that will have the um, most extreme sharp uh, edges that would shadows would fall and I'm just concentrating on those at the moment uh, what I, what I will you will see me doing uh, is going along and changing up how I'm spraying out the uh, black paint with the airbrush um, depending on how I want the shadow to fall I'll use a little bit more paint but bring the airbrush back as you can see uh, what I'm doing now is I'm um, making the cone um, larger uh, of the paint coming out but it's actually coming out uh, thinner and, and smoother because I just want to build up more of a subtle highlight uh, in shadow areas as you can see there as a the shadow comes out from the hatch it's gonna uh, gradually get lighter at this early stage it's hard for you to see what the overall result would be of, of, of doing this um, but as I uh, lay down the uh, the, the red um, later on you'll see how it how it works um, but again I'm holding the, uh, air br uh, the airbrush further away from the Rhino to try and get more of a subtle uh, shadow going towards the bottom of the rear um, door or hatch there um, using the stacks same thing again making sure that the very front panel is not going to be touched by any type of shadow at all I want that to pop because obviously that's uh, right in the front and obviously the side parts of the uh, stacks there smoke stacks are definitely going to be shaded um, I have to, you know, uh, as this is going along, and I've, I've explained it, I have to give shout outs to uh, people in the community. Like, um, first time I think I actually seen pre shading was uh, from uh, Chung from W uh, Consortium there, and uh, sorry, Wargame WG Consortium, I should say. I always get that wrong. <laughs> and uh, I thought it was amazing. Uh, he was one an, an awesome paint job and others out there in the community is one of the reasons I, I got into an airbrush and, and this technique if you want to paint a mechanized based army you can't beat it now uh, I watched a video recently and I'm not ragging on him everyone's got their own beliefs and I respect everyone's belief in this community but I think it was Christy from AG production says that um, he likes the Zen uh, uh, art of painting with a brush and airbrushes are not for him and uh, 
and that's his opinion and he's entitled to it and, and I'm not knocking his opinion uh, but my opinion differs uh, greatly uh, my opinion is that um, when you master a tool you become one with a tool and I believe that he's probably mastered the paintbrush tool uh, but uh, why not master another tool um, uh, you know uh, there's plenty of time um, um, just hit 30 uh, you know I, I can be using a, a paintbrush now for the next 20-30 years um, and there's plenty of time to fit in an airbrush there and I don't see why um, you can't you know become one with your airbrush as well as your paintbrush and they, they both um, offer different aspects uh, I can achieve a techniques with a uh, airbrush that I can't achieve with a paintbrush and, and vice versa really um, so to people out there that say that airbrushing is cheating or this that and the other it's not it's just another tool that you need to master just like a paintbrush um, people that says you can't paint miniatures with an airbrush there's no such thing as can't uh, you look at Ace awesome paint job uh, job uh, Les there painting miniatures with um, an airbrush and you look at a new guy on the scene by painted and Marnius and uh, people like myself um, yeah it's uh, hard to uh, turn around and tell people that uh, painting with a, an airbrush is uh, not not a good thing so anyway that going off that ramble anyway uh, like I say um, don't don't get into you know arguments of airbrushes this and paintbrushes this um, my personal opinion on it and it is my opinion and everyone's entitled to their own is the airbrush is exactly the same as the, pa uh, as the paintbrush it's a tool to help you paint your miniatures uh, to the best of your uh, uh, ability so here you just see I'm just this is uh, pretty straightforward I'm just literally laying down the base colour which is a scarlet red in the Vallejo model air range and uh, I've watered this down not with water with a Vallejo thinner and um, what you'll what you'll notice is that I'm trying to put down the uh, colour really really thin because I want to dictate how much of the uh, pre-shading um, colour comes through um, if I would have put down the uh, colour neat straight out the airbrush um, I still would have seen the pre-shading don't get me wrong the Vallejo model air paints very very thin um, anyone that's used it would know that but uh, thinning it down um, just gives me that much more control of when I know I've reached uh, the sweet spot of what I think's uh, gonna look good with the uh, pre-shading uh, colour coming through the red and you'll see as I'm tipping the model up and down I'm looking for areas on the tank where I think needs a little bit more red or I'm just waiting for a particular area to dry so I'll look for another area to paint uh, it is very quick painting this way don't get me wrong but you still have to have a little patience uh, when it comes to uh, making sure that the area that you're spraying in, it is uh, dry because uh, that's a surefire way to uh, get in a really poor uh, paint finish to the actual uh, mini that you're painting there or vehicle Yeah, I uh, have to add that uh, I have quite a few messages um, about going for airbrushes and, and people say do you think I should go for Badger or I cannot comment I really can't on, on those particular type of uh, um, airbrushes as I don't have them all I know is from everything that I've read and heard from people that have used them that they're, they're very good quality and um, if you know if you've got the money and and, and money's not the object then yeah uh, I'd personally go out and I'd get the better branded uh, tools myself but uh, the um, Chinese branded uh, airbrush I've got um, I can't knock it I really can't I, m my results that I'm getting with it uh, are fine I've, I've not found it a hindrance no I haven't got the uh, high-end airbrushes um, to actually compare results to so maybe I would find a difference if I actually had one of those but uh, when I'm getting the sort of smooth finishes and I'm getting the effects that I am with what essentially is a, you know a 16 17 pound airbrush I, uh, I really can't uh, complain I mean hopefully you know within the next year or two uh, I'll have, I'll, have, uh, I'll have 
possibly outgrown this airbrush and I want that uh, super super uh, precision that you get with the uh, uh, branded uh, models but at this moment in time you can't knock it so if you want an entry um, uh, level uh, airbrush that you, you want to work with and, and you know you're on a, a, a limited budget yeah, you, you can't go wrong um, just a bit of knowledge there uh, the uh, compressor I use is uh, the an AS186 there are got different uh, names uh, in America I know Global Freight uh, uh, do them but I'm, I'm not a not got a huge knowledge on that sort of thing as I'm, I'm based sort of uh, in the UK there so um, yeah if you want to look into it you there are uh, for the price bang for your buck I know uh, model man Tom uses them as uh, as well and uh, he gets good results <coughs> uh, excuse me I'm all coughs and splutters tonight <laughs> right um, here you see I'm pin washing now I've made sure that I'm super close into the uh, mini here but a few questions about this and how the technique works and hopefully this is uh, as close as I can get into the mini to actually show you what's going on now I've used the Vallejo game color inks here and I used um, black ink and I use red ink and they're heavily watered down at least 50 50 with water probably more than that uh, with a couple of drops of glaze uh, medium and uh, the color when it's mixed is a very dark uh, burgundy color uh, it's um, only a drop of black to actually make this sort of color uh, there but as you can see the, I'm actually touching the, the tip of the paintbrush that's loaded with the ink wash there on the rivets and in the cracks of, of panels and the paint just literally sucks from the brush around um, the, the recesses of the area that I'm touching and, and you can see there as I'm dragging it along I mean this is very awkward because I'm, I'm not moving the tank in any direction to help the natural angle of, of my uh, wrist there because I wanted to keep it all in one position so it stayed in camera but even so even though I'm painting very gingerly with a paintbrush there it's still sticking to the actual recesses well pretty much apart from the odd um, misstroke here and, and there but the good news is about um, using this technique is if you actually uh, make a mistake yeah it's still fairly wet so you could easily get a cotton uh, bud or a piece a little uh, piece of tissue and just wipe the uh, excess uh, wash away from the area that you don't want it to be so hopefully you're uh, seeing how easy this technique is there's not there's not uh, a person out there that couldn't uh, achieve very very good results using this sort of technique and basically now it's a case of just going around the whole tank uh, and doing that now depending on the overall finish of the miniature uh, dictates how long you take doing the pin wash now if you want to do a, a quick job uh, pin washing it's just a case of slapping the ink down and making sure it doesn't pull too much but you can be very very fine and make sure that uh, any little um, seepage of, of wash is uh, cleaned up and you make sure that you're not fully loaded the brush so when you uh, add the wash to the rivets it only goes exactly in a circle around the rivet but for this model you'll, you'll see that I'm, I'm, I'm trying to go fairly quickly um, the, the cool thing uh, that you just seen a second ago on that rear hatch of that uh, Razorback uh, uh, piece that the uh, zigzag uh, part of the two panels that meet I touched it and you see the uh, wash just suck all the way along there now to actually paint that in with a paintbrush and get that nice and neat and steady um, even if you're the best painter that would have took at least three or four times longer to do that so it just shows you how uh, good the technique is right here you see that uh, I've got uh, just a black paint which is Vallejo game colors uh, black I think it's just called black I don't think it's got any other name but it's your equivalent to your chaos black from GW and you can see that I'm just ever so slightly uh, touching the uh, edges of the armor panels with a paintbrush trying to make random patterns of how I personally believe chips uh, would appear on a, a vehicle 
Uh, I uh, pay extra special attention to any uh, extreme edge where a sharp triangle forms in, in the armour plating because that's where I, I personally believe that the uh, armour will be chipped more on extreme corners so you uh, want to make sure that those are weathered more uh, now this technique relies on very very fine uh, brush strokes you, you don't want really huge um, big areas because uh, that will detract from the detail of the model and it will just draw um, your eye and other people's eyes to huge big uh, blobs on your tank and it, it just won't look neat so less is more in some cases and uh, make sure that the chips that you actually add are very minute it will make it will make a huge difference that the smaller that you actually add the chips the, the uh, better the overall look in my opinion I've tried to uh, slow this video down more so than the other video and uh, it's a uh, it, it's <laughs> Let's be fair, it, it, it might look a bit boring in parts, I'll, I'll be honest, but uh, the only way to actually show um, people these techniques is to actually uh, show you in actual speed and uh, go go over it, um, as it as I actually do it, basically, and you'll see how simple it, simple is, it is. Unfortunately, I've got uh, this uh, out of shot there, and... Um, what I'm doing is using the edge of the brudge just to find each side of the uh, panel from the uh, tank cupola there and uh, just a tiny bit of black bringing from each side making sure that uh, I pay extra attention to the extreme uh, triangular uh, edges uh, again that's where I personally believe that the chips would um, congregate to uh, most um, this is um, a technique that's uh, very simple to do uh, but you, you, you've got a few ways of doing it you can um, rather than using black you could have used a nice dark terracotta here and uh, gone for a more of a subtle uh, uh, technique um, but I, I wanted more of an extreme version like I went with the uh, shadows uh, because um, I'm not laying down as much detail in this model so I wanted to try and the details that I did add I wanted them to pop more uh, also uh, another thing uh, with this technique you don't see it yet but obviously I'll be adding a silver on top of the black paint chips but uh, on top of that you can actually add highlights which you might see I've just added a few just for illustration purposes um, little orange lines underneath three um, dots by uh, the right hand um, bolt bolt area of the uh, hatches and that makes it look more three dimensional adding the highlight color which is orange there but I, I probably won't be doing that for the whole tank because it's, it's a time thing if you actually um, add all the black for all the chips then you add all the silver and then you add all of the um, highlights for each and every chip you're uh, looking at an extra couple of hours going over the whole model uh, like that and uh, it's uh, it doesn't seem a lot uh, but when you've got uh, other things going on in your life and, and you want to get the army out then you've got other things you know those extra two or three hours is a you know build another uh, ten man tactical squad ready to be painted so I omitted to uh, painting all the highlights but you'll probably see that in the end result but I don't think the uh, overall tank suffers for it but th this is just a, a key tip if you want to spend that extra time then what you would do in the highlighting phase of the chips is um, you'd pick uh, either the very very tops of every chip on the miniature or the bottom or the side but you have to make sure you're consistent with the highlight in which direction the light's going to shine you can't paint you know 10 chips in a row with a highlight at the bottom and then the next 10 chips uh, with a highlight at the top um, it will take the illusion away of the three-dimensional look of the chips so whichever way you're gonna add the uh, highlight to those uh, chips whether it be the top bottom or side you have to uh, follow the continuity of those uh, highlights throughout the, the uh, model there to, to 
keep that overall 3D look. Uh, you'll 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 notice that I'm adding way more little chips to the uh, front of the uh, tank here. Uh, that's where I personally believe way more stones would have been flung up and debris would have been uh, attacking the uh, tank there. Um, there, there is another cool technique which I didn't use here um, and I recommend this get a really old brush with uh, uh, bristles that are really uh, split and you can actually paint realistic chips much quicker than than than, than this way um, and you literally just use your uh, old paintbrush and you dab and stipple uh, the uh, paint right into there and uh, you obviously haven't got as much control over exactly where the, the, the chip goes but uh, you'll get natural looking chips uh, in, in a, a much quicker fashion than, than painting them with a the brush there you'd still want your nice clean uh, brush for the edge chips but uh, for the uh, chips on the open panels there uh, a nice beat up old brush um, does a, an amazing job Again, just making sure that uh, I break up some of the cleaner lines you, you've got to be careful as well if you start adding loads and loads of chips to the edge of the panels if all of the insides of all of the panels are, are clean it will it will break the illusion of uh, uh, a battle worn vehicle um, so you've you've got to sort of uh, balance it out really So that's what I'm doing here. Uh, while this is going on here at the moment, I'm just going to talk about other things. I recently just finished watching Temporal Crusade uh, Zero One's uh, battle report now any of my subscribers that aren't subscribed to uh, Temporal Crusade Zero One please go and do that and watch his battle report um, I, I can officially say you'll be hard pushed and I mean very hard pushed to find any battle repa uh, report anywhere in your White Dwarf magazine uh, on YouTube that's uh, as epic as that and I'm not selling it short I think it was 100,000 points across I think it was four boards and there was three reavers I think or four reavers um, a warlord many many uh, tyranid uh, bio titans chaos titans it was it was uh, a real joy to watch those battle reports you'd need to go to Minus's channel as well to watch um, part of the battle report there because it's split between the two channels but uh, yeah what a treat that was to watch again you, you're just seeing me picking out the edges of the panels here and you can see how quickly I'm flying along I'm using the edge of the brush as well if I use the tip of the brush for the edge lines I wouldn't be able to follow the panel line exactly well you could but you'd have to be a lot lot more careful uh, and you'd be doing things a lot slower so using the actual um, brush to work for you there helps uh, immensely I must say after uh, painting and modeling the Storm Raven, uh, doing this Rhino just it was it was so easy modeling it. Oh, it was it was it, it's a different kettle of fish and, and painting it uh, again it's it's just doesn't it's just like a little square box. The ease of painting this Rhino uh, was just ridiculous. Uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed painting the Storm Raven, but. Uh, uh, coming from a, a, com a more complex model to a model like this, it's it's such a re uh, relaxing experience. It's uh, the equivalent, uh, if you like, to uh, 
running in a race uh, and then having a nice stroll around the park <laughs> and uh, painting this rhino was uh, definitely a stroll around the park it looks like the uh, camera's frozen here but uh, I can officially say there is work going on here I definitely should have done a better job editing this out but uh, not 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 the uh, niftiest guy with the old editing software there, but I do try. Also forgot to say, uh, although I haven't uh, drilled out every single one of the uh, holes on the exhaust stack, son, I do normally do that on my vehicles. I've made sure that I've uh, drilled out the very top holes of the uh, smoke stacks there. I think that's one of the most crucial things uh, to do uh, when you paint a vehicle. It only takes a minute or two to drill out the holes on your weapons and uh, exhaust exhaust vents, but I, I do think it adds to the overall look of the miniature here. Full apologies for getting uh, this off camera and not editing out, guys. I really do apologise. I'd uh, sing you a song, but uh, <laughs> no one wants to hear my voice <laughs> singing. I uh, I need to uh, send these videos over to the real Methril and get her to do the voice over uh, voiceovers. Um, she's prob she's got the uh, she's the vo official voice of 40k gaming or war gaming in general. Um, she's got a much nicer and smoother voice than me. Uh, there you go, another plug there, Real Metro, check her channel out, uh, she's got some awesome vids. Uh, what was the video? I'm trying to think now, is it? Onimaru or something? I don't know, I can't think off the top of my head guys, but please check that video out. If that doesn't bring a smile to your face and you've definitely uh, been swallowed up by the warp. Uh, here I've painted the tracks in a bulk and metal mix with a bit of uh, steel and that's Vallejo Model Air and I'm using Badder Black heavily watered down here 2 to 1 water ratio so that's 2 drops of water 1 drop um, Badder Black wash and again I'm using a huge uh, brush uh, that was cheap. I bought these in a set and uh, the nice brushes actually £2.50 from Home Bargains. It's a bargain. Cheap at half the price as the saying goes. <laughs> so uh, and they come in really handy these huge brushes uh, especially when I'm, I'm doing the, the washes there on uh, vehicles. Um, what, I, what I make sure that I do here is on the flat surfaces like you'll see on these inner parts of the uh, track track joints but I'm trying to make sure that I don't get any really unusual uh, uh, poolings of um, of the wash there uh, it's, it's not the easiest thing to control with such a huge brush that just wants to just soak the whole mini in uh, about a black wash but um, I do try and keep it under somewhat of a control it's not 100% crucial because this is the underside of the vehicle here and um, it's not as important as how the, uh, the side would look and also I will be adding some weathering uh, effects to the tracks as well so if I do get the odd um, unusual pooling of paint on the flatter surfaces with a wash there I can cover that up with some of the weathering techniques I'll be uh, using later on but um, it's there's a uh, two ways of, uh, of looking at uh, painting a miniature um, it's not all about speed but you do want somewhat of uh, a speed when you when you're painting a miniature you want it to look nice but you want to do it quick and I, I'm always trying to find the happy me uh, medium uh, or middle ground where I'm happy with the end result but I've not spent over a week painting a rhino, which I used to do um, when I uh, when I was uh, really um, my rivet counting uh, days, and I make sure that I uh, highlighted each and individual uh, little um, button, even inside the rhinos there. 
and, and you get to a stage where you think I'm not entering competitions and I don't think I will and the average uh, person won't actually see that extra bit of detail unless they're actually looking at a photograph of the miniature where the you know that they're they're in macro mode and they can actually see it there's a very few people with eyes uh, sharp enough to pick out those small fine details so now I just try and paint to a nice pleasing level of uh, a detail and um, speed things up here you'll see that I'm using the Vallejo um, gold that's uh, in alcohol and it's 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 really good um, I'm super impressed with the model air metallics but uh, the one based in gold is even better I made sure that I, I didn't I normally would um, base coat something uh, in brown that I'm going to paint gold but I made sure that I showed you how good the coverage is that was straight out of the bottle not needed thinning it went straight over the red super thin super smooth yep there's uh, I've got nothing bad to say about it here I want to show you decal stacking um, I have a huge problem putting large bland decals down on on a door um, how if I put the larger um, uh, blood angel iconography there that black uh, the black wings with the blood drop there down on that panel door that you get on the um, vehicle sheet it's just it's too plain it's too it's it's too blocky uh, and uh, it'll detract from the overlook of the miniature because people's eyes will be naturally drawn to one big huge black splodge on the door so what I did is I um, trimmed an Aquila uh, uh, decal that had like uh, lightning bolts at the bottom from that sheet and uh, put that there and stacked at the smaller um, blood angels drop there and I think uh, the overall look of that is much more pleasing than one big chunkier decal that's uh, lacking in detail right I've been talking now for nearly 40 minutes I've got to have a drink my uh, throat's so dry so excuse this as the uh, mic starts to rattle Right, sorry about that. You've probably caught me gulping on camera there. Uh, but uh, all right, here we go. This again, <laughs> huge apologies. Um, you'll see that I'm uh, adding a dusty weathering to the bottom quarter of the tank there, and this is Vallejo Game Colors uh, Earth color. Now, sometimes I'll uh, add other colors. I'll probably start with like a bestial brown and a beasty brown and I'll build it up but because of early in the video that you may have seen that I laid on the bottom third of the tank uh, like a nice dark um, uh, sh a shadow going up the tank with the uh, black paint that I had in the airbrush there that I'm getting away with just using one colour and it, it, and it gradually goes from a, a darker dust at the bottom up to a lighter dust uh, up the tank and you'll see about right, the bottom third of the tank has got a nice dusty look dirty look to the tank there and you can see that's fairly natural uh, you can see that uh, the way um, there's a few things that unfortunately I forgot to pick up like the rust effects you see on those tracks were done with the Tamiya weathering kit but uh, the, in the other video you've seen you just use the makeup applicator and you just slap it on really uh, the lights was airbrushed using uh, the Vallejo model air uh, colors there and I've uh, tried to make them look a little glowy just a little uh, technique there and uh, that's it I need some still photos and I, as you can see I think decal stacking looks way nicer than putting one uh, single huge uh, decal there it's a bit of the rust effects with the Tamiya weather weathering kit and uh, that's the overall look with the paint chips and uh, quickest uh, vehicle I've ever painted um, fact <laughs> and uh, I think it turned out okay uh, considering I uh, hope there's been some tips in here not the best uh, bit of filming but I uh, hope you've enjoyed it guys thanks for watching